Hey everybody, uh, we're back for another video. Uh, this time we're playing uh, some Golgari Elves in Modern as opposed to Blue Black Mill, which is what we just got done with. So this will be uh, kind of cool. Uh, it's another another deck that uh, one of our uh, one of our followers uh, wanted to see, so we kind of threw together uh, a variation of it ourselves, and uh, we're gonna run it through a league here. So um, yep, um, to start we're gonna do a nice little quick deck tech, and then we'll go ahead and jump into round one. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with some of the most notable cards in this deck. We have the Manador package between the Llanowar Elves and the Elvish Mystics. They seem like an automatic include, if you ask me. Um, then we jump into some of the more um, supportive roles like Heritage Druid, um, Neto Senado. Those are a couple cards that are always in the list. Yeah, super busted when uh, you get to use Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel together, obviously. Um, just uh, a really good way to power out some of your, your strong spells. So. Yep, and another way that we're, I'm going to influence a Heritage Druid in the long term, where we have um, Dwayne's Elite. When we have another Elf, we're going to we'll go ahead and get another 1-1 one, one when it enters the battlefield. Elvish Visionary lets us draw in the more Elves so we can keep the train going. Um, and then we have some of the payoff cards, such as Elvish Clan Caller, which is a Lord, which also can go ahead and search up additional um, Clan Callers for, throughout the game. And then we got some of the additional card draw, you know, so we can out advantage of our opponent with the lead the stampede and collected companies. Yep, uh, collected company obviously always a super good card. Um, should be pretty powerful in this deck. Um, not sure if if this build of elves, if lore of elves is better than uh, traditional elves with like uh, shaman of the pack and um, azuri. But you know, I mean, this will be a, a good learning experience for us and for everybody watching. Yep. So and then uh, the compliment because we are playing lore, so we're a little um handcuffed when we were doing our deck building of course yep um, we have cards like finale of devastation that's going to take over the crater hood behemoth um slot yep um and then we got some, three copies of walk and ballista obviously walk and ballista um with lures which is actually a cool interaction when we company and we have to put walking ballista in the graveyard we actually have a plan now yep which is obviously really sweet so you know hopefully hopefully that uh could come up I mean, and then um the biggest question we had when we're playing Lures is, are we going to be green-white elves, or are we going to be green-black? And based off of what we were analyzing based on the card selection we had to our disposal, we chose black because it had the best support cards. Leading the way with one of the best one-drops that you can play is Thoughtseize. Yeah, Thoughtseize, obviously, really, really important for beating like the combo-type uh, decks. So I think that was a, a pretty pretty obvious inclusion if you're playing black. Um It'll, it'll, you know, I mean, white is arguably better against, um, against the red decks because white gets cards like Barrett and Forge, Tender, and Core Firewalker. Core Firewalker, a little awkward being double white, but still would probably be a card we would play. Nonetheless, we decided to go with black to make us a little better against decks like Odd Nauseam, for example. Ex exactly. <laughs> and we have some cards that actually can help against the red decks, such as yep. Fatal Push, as mentioned. Um, and then all these cards have really good, um, versatility with several of the matchups at least from our experience playing in the lotus box event and that brief league that we had on wood boggles and then just with the mirror mill yep and then of course i'm our 15 slot being loris because the card is very strong had to see if elves is a deck that needed a companion as well or not necessarily needed but yeah could benefit from it, it definitely you know something interesting something worth trying so we're we're gonna go with it yep. there's definitely some cool stuff happening so. excited to try this deck out so we're gonna go ahead and jump into round one so let's go ahead and do that. Um, and just a nice friendly reminder, go ahead and subscribe. And also don't hesitate to go on the website if you want to see more videos like this and see some articles that include some deck lists and various like information that could be useful for your next event. Yep, we're going to be pumping out uh, a lot of these and we're pretty excited about it. And hopefully uh, you all are too. So that's pretty cool. Yep. I know what's one one thing that's very exciting is the online on P, P, uh, PT that they're doing, actually. Yeah, I know. I mean, obviously, you know, some people more happy about it than others, but it's, you know, it's a it's a cool opportunity for players like ourselves who haven't qualified yet, who now have an opportunity to potentially qualify with the online qualifiers that they're starting next Monday, right? Yep, next Monday. And that's very exciting for players that haven't been or players like us. Uh, both we've been there. We would love to get back. And for yep. those who have never had a chance, like, they're very – a very good opportunity. They're ten dollars to enter. Top sixteen cut with single elimination after top sixteen. You're guaranteed some sort of prize for top sixteen spots. So I would definitely recommend taking the opportunity. It's a great 
great experience at the end of the day. Yeah, what's really nice about this standard format too is like even if you don't have a super stacked account, one of the best decks only has like five rares in it. Cycling's a super solid deck. You should probably consider putting some time into it if you want to do one of those events for sure. I agree. And this weekend we're going to pump out some arena footage. So yep. if it, anybody needs any influence, we'll do some cycling and we'll do some of the common decks that people might be playing. We'll be revisiting Racto Sacrifice as well. At yep. least that's a deck that I'm going to be looking towards. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a definitely a solid solid way to go if you're not looking to be a more um, mid If you don't want to grind with all the Orion decks and just want to try and get people dead, that's a very reasonable plan. And during the stream, you might see us going back and forth between this page right here. Um, we do apologize about that. We're still working the kinks out of um, getting our stream together, as if you notice. From our previous um, Demir Mill stream, we're trying to upgrade the look of it. Yep. Um, definitely definitely think this one is, is better than our last one, though, so that's cool. Yep, and the deck selection isn't the worst either, you no. know, compared to Mill. Yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure what to, what to expect out of this one. I'm curious to see again how, how the red matchup is. Indeed. Um, it was nice. Unfortunately, we didn't have footage of it, but when we did get that trophy playing Boggles, we did make the deck dump. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was that was cool. Yeah, but... You made the deck dump. Uh, I top aided the Lotus Box event, definitely putting the Boggles 75. Yep. And I just got an article there. release that's coming out tomorrow on the deck, so that should be nice. Yep. Yep. All right, so it looks like we got round one, so let's um take a gander. As I mentioned, you're going to see this page up a few times. Don't mind it. We're still working through the kinks. All right, let's go ahead and reveal Loris to start. Yeah. And opponent does not have a companion, so that's interesting. Our hand looks pretty solid to yeah. me. This looks like what we would want to see. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nice hand. We get to go turn one, Mystic, turn two, Druid, Sentinel, and then three mana visionary, and then yeah, I mean that's that's really solid. And then yeah, if we that, draw another one drop, we could uh, have three more mana. So yeah, yeah, really explosive. We'll definitely keep this hand. There's there's mm -hmm. no question. Um, really explosive. Yeah, these are kind of the hands that have good setup. Being it looks like we're up against. So Tron. being against Tron, I would imagine our first play could be Nettle Sentinel if we think the damage matters. Because but we also have to consider this could be Etron and we could be getting Chalice. So truth. All these things we need to take into consideration um, here. All good. right, with Coco being the draw, it may be the bet. So let's let's pause and think here about how, what we what we can do. So if we Sentinel first, <clears throat> we get to attack, and then it untaps from green cards being cast. So that would be a free two damage. But again, we have to kind of think about Coco or um, Chalice. So probably not the best play. The best play is probably getting the Elvish Mystic into play or the Heritage Druid. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so my, my line of thinking is um, based on the leagues and the Lotus Box event that the e Etron has been in higher favor than normal Tron has been. I would agree so with I that. So I think we do have to take the percentage points on that, that it might be Etron. Yeah. So with that being said, um, Elvish Mystic probably is the correct Yeah, I think, it, I think it is Mystic as well. Yep. So, that's, that's so we're going to go ahead and Blooming Marsh Mystic. What we'll go with here. Mana is very important, especially after drawing the Coco. Yeah, because we can still beat the Chalice potentially if we can cast cards like Collected Company. Yep, and we do have the mana in hand to be able to do so. Mm -hmm. So I like our. Another nice thing is too, if we do get Chalice, we can just slam the Luris here, which I think is what we'll do. To be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we are getting Chalice. It is Etron. So. Yep. So <clears> we did make the correct call. Yep. Yep. So this is going to be a good Luris turn. That's actually not a bad draw. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not good. upset about it. Yeah, I think we just get the Loris down. Yep. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, against Etron, we just want to get pressure going. Yep. Well, I'm against Etron. We, we need Black Mana. Yeah. So we're going to cast Loris. <clears throat> Here we go. Turn two, Loris. Mm -hmm. It's actually good pressure, too, because it is yeah, a good pressure at the end of the day. Um, Yep, absolutely. I mean, our opponent definitely kept their hand on the strength of Chalice going tower, tower. And, you know, hopefully they don't have Eldrazi Temple plus uh, Thought Not here. They don't. So that's nice. Um, they could definitely have a removal spell for Loris, but that's whatever. Um, yeah, we actually, um, we're not in a position where Loris is like super great. So it wouldn't, no, yeah, it wouldn't I mean, hurt. It, we'd, of course, appreciate if they don't kill the Loris. Yeah, that'd be nice. It looks like another Chalice. 
Ah, expedition, expedition map, map to counter. Yeah, they forgot that they had a chalice, I guess. Yep. And that's really nice online. You can't can't uh, sneak that into play online. Yep. Um, fun fact: I've had an opponent get um game losses um for that. Instantly. Yeah, you know, if I I actually I I did that to someone at an open this year just on accident. I missed it, and they noticed it a turn later. I didn't do it intentionally, but you know, it happened, and it you know investigation. But I ended up assume. yeah uh yeah there was no I mean my opponent called it we obviously called judge and um unfortunately the game had progressed too far. So yeah, that's always unfortunate. And then he lost that game, but he beat me in the match. So, I mean, I guess justice was served in the end. All right, so we'll go ahead and get the Blooming Marsh in the play. That yep, seems I like correct. Blooming Marsh. Hit you for three yep. with Loris and just pass. Just hang out. We don't need the company main phase. There's no benefit to it. They're not doing anything that's telling us, hey, we need to have you company. Um, I'm expecting Thought Nuts here this turn. It looks like a good Thought Nuts here turn for our opponent. If he has the land, which he does. Yep. Um, yeah, and I mean, Thought Knot here is super We just okay. let it happen. It's fine. Yeah, like, we're, we're not that upset about it. <clears throat> sure. Interesting. Is this going to be a displacer? Matter no, it's just a reshaper. Okay. I guess he was when he, really... When he, yeah, when he floated the white, I was just, you know... Hey, he wanted to make sure we couldn't counter that spell. I, I he, guess so. He's not... No yeah. force today. Either way, it resolves. Indeed, it Super does. okay with that. <clears throat> well, <laughs> it, the white man was... It might have just been just... If I have it, might as well use it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's unplay some Collected Company. I haven't cast this card in a while. Yeah, neither have I. Really, really good magic card. In fact, so. I've never actually cast that during the standard format. Oh, that's that's pretty crazy. All right, so I actually I think we take um, Nettle Sentinel and Walking Ballista here, and then we can replay Ballistas from our yard in the future. Um, then do the we want, do, is there more um, take and take in the Land of Arrows? Then oh, you're right. There there probably is more. I think if the to playing the Ballista in the graveyard is a plan. Then we'll see the, the, the thing. Arrows. The thing I was thinking about with Sentinel is uh, potentially hitting um, Heritage Druids is uh, interesting. It's, it's also true. a better um, attacker. So I, I do think this is like kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not actually sure which is better. I guess the elves is better for the sole purpose that this turn, if we would like to, we can fetch play ballista for three and then kill the reshaper and still have ballista in play. This is true. Um, so you know, I mean, both are really good options. Um, I'm leaning towards the land arrows. Um, all right, and let's go with a, the elves. I think it's a better EV play. Yeah. Yep. And this is, you know, the situation that Larry brought up in the in the deck tech exactly is hitting the ballista, but it's still value because we can just replay it. That was a pretty sweet draw too. So, so we're going to fetch up a green source. We don't need to really have a, any more reason to take any damage. Yep. Um, consensus the tron, we do have to make sure we're not just willy nilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to be too aggressive. But the nice thing is, Lurus is uh, gaining us life back. So you know, uh, I I personally think that a ballista for three here is pretty solid. Um, but you know, it's it's definitely not what we have to go with. I guess we could go with another option we have that might be better is uh, clan caller ballista for two, shoot down the reshaper because we can just keep replaying the ballista. So it, it's not something we need to have in play, and that will maximize um, future mm. damage for us and can also let us clan caller for another clan caller next turn True. if we'd like. Another line that we could also take is um, we just go clan caller and then just hold up company and just go for a bigger next turn. But I All those are options, yeah. yeah. And um, maybe that's better. Maybe we don't want to give him just permanence to, yeah, maybe we the just, shape. I think we just want to extend the board right now. Um, and just go from there. So if that's the case, I think we might actually visionary instead of clan caller. Just that's actually correct. Let's that's help a, yeah. refill our hand. Uh, well, not refill our hand, but just on Gary can trip in our clan. Yeah. It's a better body the attack. Can, and the clan caller can come in next turn Absolutely. and just go in for a good turn. Absolutely. So yeah, Absolutely. I like that plan. <clears throat> so, and obviously we're not swinging with the lures because he nope, will block. Nope, he would block. We're not attacking. This is fine. We can sit. Um... We don't want to sit too long, obviously, because then that gives us uh, that gives our opponent a chance to rip all his dust, which is definitely you know one of the worst cards. Possibilities, we could see. yes. Yeah. All right, we're just gonna ship the turn, and if anybody wonders, that storm count meter is only coming up because we do have those couple what what are the storms in the sideboard, so the game is registering that we have storm cards. <clears throat> okay, there's the dismember. Um, 
and I guess that's got to be fine. I don't think we can do much about no. it, unfortunately. It's unfortunate, but we have a lot of expos, so we can still get some payoffs. So. Yep, definitely. Unfortunately, our line, um, we didn't get to get, get value off of the ballista, but, you know, sometimes that happens. Yep. So we're going to go ahead. All right, this is really, really good. Oh, so we just take elite clan caller, I'm easily, pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of pressure. Our yep. opponent might just be dead, honestly. Yeah, this is this is a it's huge, exactly what we were looking for. Huge attack. It's actually not a horrible draw. I like fetching and numps in the deck out. Yep, me too. Again, I'll just grab a green sword. Just no reason to take more damage than we need to. Yeah, so our opponent has one block. If we play clan caller, they're just very dead. Yeah. So we're just going to do that. Um, and we're going to swing everybody. Yep. Yeah. Seems good, unless they have spatial. Yep, right. they just they get it. Now, I will say, when we constructed the deck, we didn't think a ton about artifact removal, so this is, you know, uh, um, Ensnaring Bridge is going to be a pretty hard card for us to beat, and obviously the Chalice on the play is going to be more brutal for us than on the draw, but I will say Thoughtseize is at least pretty good. Yep, so Thoughtseize we, is where we're going to have to be at. We did not um, put any thought into um, artifacts. Yeah, which is just a mistake on our part, honestly. Yep. And we'll, we'll accept that. Yep. Um, I would imagine Seal of Primordium would have been a pretty reasonable card been, because of how it works with We also didn't Lurus. think about... Um, we played... The side goal would lead to Stampede, but is that necessarily better than playing a Mistress Bobble in this deck? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Probably, honestly, like Elves is kind of a snowball effect deck, and you have so many one-mana dorks that let you lead on to. But... You know, it's possible it and wasn't right. Also, game uh, we did zero testing before. Do, yeah, yeah, we just matches. you know, yep, this is we, the very first game we've ever played. Yep, this we list. threw the deck together. We were told build an elves deck, and you know, we made our best attempt at a, a, a rough draft of an elves deck. So, Agreed. You know, um, so I think um, <clears throat> Thoughtsy is probably where I'm at. Yep. Um, I don't really see anything else that like catches my eye. Me either. Um, I guess um, it doesn't actually hurt to trim some of the one drops because they're going to be bringing. Yeah, I, I would imagine like Nettle Sentinel. Yeah, Nettle Sentinel is probably, probably the four cards I would remove because I think yeah. I'd still want my elves. We can so. bring those back in on the play, but I think on the draw, absolutely not. Yeah. I'm not into it. So I 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I think that's where I'm at. Yep, me too. This way, at least all our one drops generate mana. Um, maybe they'll have the mindset that Karn is too slow. But I, <laughs> I highly doubt they'll have that mindset, but it is possible. You know, mm. sometimes you just have to hope. Yep. Uh, we're going to keep this. I mean, we have Thoughtseize, which yep. seems good enough. Thoughtseize uh, and a redraw. Yep. Um, then yep. we just got a very hope. solid hand, um, honestly. Yep. Um, Unfortunately, Etron mulligans pretty aggressively, too, and that makes Thoughtseize even better against them. So yep. don't hate this. I agree. Because they're not going to chalice. They did don't go down the six cards, thankfully. Yep. Which is pretty um, common for Etron for anyone who has played Etron or, you know, play, has played against it. Usually uh, Etron specifically mulligans a lot. Very aggressively mulliganing deck just because um, the busted lands are, like, very, very important for the deck. And cards like chalice are so important as well. I that agree. A lot of times they'll mulligan to those kinds of cards. All right, so it does. Uh, so he has five cards in hand. So this is going to be a nice mm -hmm. little um, thoughtsies turn. Yep, and I think we're just shocking. I don't really want to fetch this turn nope. at all. I um, agree. Yep, and thought sees him. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm not in the business of taking five on turn one. You know, make our decision. Don't feel like going jund on him. Well, chalice is. So he has chalice, but I actually, actually think I one. think we can beat the chalice. I think Karn is more of an yeah. issue. I think we yep. should stay. There. I just want to analyze the hand a little bit. Um. And Chalice looks like the easy pick, but I think it's actually a trap to take the Chalice. Yep, we just Karn... talked about how Ensnaring Bridge is almost impossible for us to beat. Yep. So and let's if that's just... the case, uh, yeah. we just can't leave it in his hand. Yep. Yep, Coco can get our one drops into play, which is the point. All right. Our opponent is about 100% to go Chalice for one, which is fine. We're going to just go ahead and play Visionary and redraw this turn most likely. Yep, and just try and hit some land drops into this collecting yep. company. Land drops would be good. Another good reason we didn't fetch on turn one was the draw that was the exactly. Lands. Yeah. Yep. Chalice for one, as we were mentioning, it was the easy play for him, mm -hmm. and it's correct. Yep. Like they don't know what our hand looks like, obviously. And if I was playing their hand, I would definitely chalice for one. Yeah, they I didn't agree. have anything else going on anyway. So. Mm -hmm. well, okay. So. 
Uh, now we have to consider how important fetching another overgrown tomb so we can cast Lurus later is, or do we just... I mean, I know the list has four forests, and I think those are the only lands that... Yeah, they're the only basics. So if we fetch a forest, that would mean we have three lands that can't cast the Lurus. It's probably worth that risk to protect our life total a little bit. We have a lot of yeah. other things going on. We don't need the Lurus anytime soon. So I think just fetch basic forest is the, the play here. And play the visionary and try and hit hit more lands. I 100 percent agree. I noticing that we're at fifteen. Yeah. That I don't think it's some um, smart on our part to just risk no. our life total that high. No, certainly not. So visionary, hopefully we can just draw into a land. Another more visionary visionaries is gonna, are fine. Yep, it's a redraw. Yep. Um I'm a big fan of Visionary. I played it in briefly oh, yeah. in, in Rally the Ancestors and Yeah, Standard. yeah, Elvish Visionary and also um the uh the vampire, Dusk Legion Zealot are super yeah, Dusk powerful Legion. cards. Like tribal cards that can't in Silver Yule Adapt too. These tribal cards that generate two for ones are just super good. Meta Reshaper. Yep. And that's fine. We don't yeah. care much about this. Yep, yeah, we're not we're not in the business where we're um no really gonna care. No, not something we're concerned about really. <sighs> And the verdict says, all right, that's... I think we're visionarying again. Yeah, we're going to visionary 100%. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we can just find a land. Yep. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> this is the risk of uh, letting him... All, all right, right, that's a sweet draw. So, yep, seems good. Anyway, I was going to say this is, you know, the risk of uh, of keeping a, a two-lander that was somewhat cold to Chalice. And, you know, we just got to draw the lands and... There, fortunately, we did hit one. Yep, and we, we're one land away from being. Oh able yeah, to cast no, this company, is this is like... all fine, and we can also uh, we can actually finale of devastation for uh, Heritage Druid next turn to this generate a lot of mana. Oh, uh, this is pretty annoying. What is this? Oh, thought not. Okay, that's I mean still annoying, but less annoying yeah. than Karn um, would have been. I guess he didn't have the land yet. I, I didn't catch so... that, but. <clears throat> What I'm thinking, he might just take the company because I would if we draw a land that yeah, yeah, yeah. it would just generate the assume. most EV. I would assume he takes the company. Uh, I will say, though, I think this finale is actually like really dangerous. Because I both cards are Heritage, really good. Heritage Druid is going to be really, really stupid. Um, yeah, and because we literally get to tutor it and then play a clan caller, like, which is very, very strong. Uh, the Blast Zone's like pretty annoying, which, I mean, we did know about, but... Um, yeah, nope. I mean, yep. Not much we can do about nope. it. So no, nope, not much at all. And you know, that's it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> okay, okay. So let's see. Does this change how we do anything? Probably not. I think. I don't think so either. Um, I think it's still a finale for the one drop. Put and then tap and get the clan caller into play. And then probably shock and play the other one too. We probably just want both clan callers in this turn. Yeah. Uh, it sets us up for the most mana next turn. Yeah. Which, yeah, we can like play a ballista, shoot down thought not. Like the game is definitely not over. Uh, yes, we would, like to, we would like to do this, please. Heritage Druid, please. <clears throat> Tap for three green. One, two, three. Play a clan caller. Shock ourselves. Play another clan yep. caller. Pass. I will have to agree with you. Yep. And then next turn we can uh, we can do some stuff like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, we have nine mana, so <clears throat> not bad. Yep, it's definitely fine. Yep. Another reason I was a big fan of playing like finales in the deck, just because in situations like this where you wouldn't expect, because um, yeah. the card's so easy to think it's just a closer, but it's a good setup card, just like yeah, this definitely. moment was. Definitely, definitely. Um, probably better than Court of Calling in this particular deck, just because this deck like needs a little bit mm -hmm. more push. And the to extra win. low crater hoof ability, you know, with mm -hmm. with the Heritage Roots and the eight mana dorks, you know. It's fine. Okay, let's so let's um, think about this first. Yeah, second. we got a lot of a lot of things to think about here so, for sure. <clears throat> so let's see here. We could tap. We tap those three. That's three, four, five, six, seven. I think we just play a five-five ballista and that's say a, your turn. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was mm-hmm. thinking, so, and we need a shot to do that, or uh, no? to make it a five-five, yes. But I think okay. it's worth it for yep. sure. I was just trying to make sure I kept track of the numbers correctly. Yeah. So green, green. Oh, actually, we got to cancel this. Oh, hold on. That is not how that works because uh, we only have five elves. So we can't tap two of the elves for mana. Truth. So So let's think that's fine. We can still play a ballista for four, which is good enough to kill the thought knot if we so choose, which we will on our opponent's turn. Um, Three. Yeah. And then, yep. Five. Yep, yep, yep. Five, six. And then seven, eight. Seven, eight. This still works fine. Yep, Heritage Druid, not uh, one I'm the most used to playing with. Forget Agreed. that. You need to tap three at a time. So. What is he doing? He's just putting a counter on the Blast Zone. He's going to pop it for two, but that's totally fine. We're going to lure us and then start replaying the Visionaries and things. So this is a a very reasonable spot for us, to be honest. Um, It'd be really nice if he doesn't draw Um, Tron. I'm thinking we're going to swing with both Visionaries here. Uh, I'm not sure if we're supposed to do that, only because I think the matter reshape... I guess he won't block with the reshaper, so it is a free three damage. Yeah, that's a smart play. Because they're point. gonna they're gonna go and disappear. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I think I think it's right only because I think blocking with matter shaper is actually bad. Um, if blocking with matter shaper were good, then I would. Say, that's strange. Oh, because you have blista, duh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, makes sense. Yep. yep this is all we're fine. Just gonna ship we're the gonna turn. ship it over and. Uh, and if he is on pop and blast one, that means he's not doing much else. Yeah, like I said, we just really hope to dodge Tron plus some stupid card. Yep. You know. Well, that's worst possible, as uh, yeah, as that, I just said, actual. That worst was the actual scenario. worst some possible thing that could have happened. Yep. Uh, I can tell you, as someone who played Etron. Uh, for a couple opens, yeah, the Tron, Tron and Etron is super good and super important, and uh, we really want to dodge it there. But either way, this is still fine. Definitely, yep. definitely beatable. I um, agree. I think what uh, Reality Smasher is probably next worst. Thank God he didn't have that one too. Uh, so we just block Reshaper and then shoot Thought Not down. Yep, I agree. Yep. So we're gonna block like that. And then we're going to go remove. Yep, just there. go boom, boom, boom. And get the Thought Knot off the board, draw a card. Then on our turn, we're probably going Lurus Replay Visionary, draw a card. I definitely think we're we're in a pretty, honestly, reasonable spot in this game. Like, uh, them not having something else here was really nice. Um Dwinan's Elite's a really sweet that's actually draw. A that's really actually good just draw. plus one mana. So yeah, that's, that's that was awesome. a good draw. Yeah, that's really really nice. That's uh, really nice too. Uh, not really. He has yeah. Chalice. So oh, that's fair. Yep. Um. Yep. So Dwinan's Elite. Um. Yeah, we're gonna make three mana here. Three green mana. Tap black black. <clears throat> Play Lurus. And then play a visionary. Oh, where's the lure set? There we are. Visionary. <clears throat> Draw. That's that pretty was- good for later. Go. He has one card in hand, so we guys just gotta hope that it ain't anything good. Yeah, I mean, what all is dust would be horrendously bad. Karn yeah, would be. But we the Stampede can actually catch bad. us back up if we really had to. Karn's the absolute worst. Karn is okay. the worst, but at least we have Ballista. All right, he... I guess Ballista can't activate with Karn, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, all right. Um, the concession there is sweet. Yeah, the concession is nice. We weren't definitely a. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Have a win because. Um, yeah, if they if they would have had either of those cards, uh, Karn or All Is Dust, we'd probably lose that game. But most of their other cards are kind of blanks here. I guess Dismember would have been pretty good or Spatial Contortion. But um, yeah, I mean this this was sweet. This we literally both games got chaliced for one on turn two with our you know twelve one drop elf deck, um, and you know beat it fairly easily so yeah that's pretty sweet um I, I was very impressed by that um 
We did have lack of artifact hate. And I, yep. That was a, a slip up on our end. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can call it a slip up, but at the same time, like Etron, like how, how popular is the Etron deck actually? I don't think it's actually that popular for being honest. So, you know, it was a, a, a risk obviously to do that. And, you know, fortunately we didn't need it in this match anyway. Um, I highly doubt we will play against Ensnaring Bridger Chalice again in this league, but I could be wrong. Um, we, I've seen crazier things happen. Yeah, so, I mean, we played know. a Milmir in our last league, so, yeah. you know, you never know. Anything's possible. This is um quarantine magic, as we like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, do want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell if you want to get alerts when we have new videos. In addition, check out the Swish Games website where you can find articles written by Steven and myself, along with other various members of our of Team Swish, along with some great resources such as deck lists and so forth. If you have any questions about the, this match or any other match we have played, leave a comment or send us a tweet. Information for that will be below as well. Again, me and Steven want to thank you for watching this video. Yep. Um, we'll be getting um, round two um, set up shortly. And until next time, stay safe. All right, see you guys in a bit.